So, okay, this is the second part of the one-way ANOVA analysis. In this part, in this part of the lecture, I will discuss a one-way ANOVA analysis for unequal sample sizes. So, in the previous lecture, in the previous recorded lecture, we took three groups and all those groups, the sample sizes are same. Mean the observation in each sample size in each group was same. It, it was four. Now, in this quick question, I am just going to discuss a very simple example in which the sample sizes will be different. So, mainly how you will handle such like questions. So, in this lecture, I will show you that how may you will manually calculate uh, the X statistic and then how you will check that all those sample sizes mean are equal or not equal. Should you need to accept null hypothesis or should you need to reject null hypothesis? So, this is a very simple question. The student in three classes in an elementary statistic course obtained total score as in follow for below table. Is there any significant difference in the score received by the student meeting at different time of day? State completely the hypothesis you are testing at your conclusion. So basically these are three different classes. These are th students in three classes in an elementary statistic course. And they basically at uh, in a specific day, at a specific time, they collect different scores. So at 8 o'clock, they collect this sample, 121, 117. So in this sample, 1, 2, 3, in this sample, there are 11 observations. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. At 10 o'clock, they collect another sample, another group. In this sample, the total number of observations are 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Similarly, in the third group, they conduct they collect another sample which is our sample 3 and they collect this data at 2 o'clock and in this class in this sample in the third sample there are 12 observations so the procedure is much similar as considered as the one way ANOVA there is a little bit changes in the treatment sample square sum of square so i will show you how you will conduct the analysis so the starting from the first one we will say all the mean of these samples are same Okay, so all these three classes mean are same. The score of all these classes mean average of the score are same. Alternative, at least one will be not same or R will not be same. The second one is the level of significance. So we want to use 5% level of significance, number of treatment. So we have basically three treatment. We One treatment is 8 o'clock, the second treatment is 10 o'clock and the third treatment is 2 o'clock. So we have three treatment. So in each treatment, there are different. So in row 1, so basically in the first treatment, there are 11 observations. In the second, there are 9 and in the third, there are 12. So how you will calculate N? Because in the previous example you use c is equal to r so basically in that example all the rows observation are same in each sample we took four observation but now we have different so what you will do add this this and this so 11 plus 9 plus 12 so you can see 11 plus 9 plus 12 so we have total number of observation are 32 so this is our n now the same procedure TJ, TJ represent the sum of the column. So at 8 o'clock, this is x1 sum of this, at 10 o'clock sum of this and at 2 o'clock sum of this. When you sum all these, you will get G. So basically this is your G. You can also write this as a G. Okay. And G is equal to summation TJ. So basically this is summation I. Summation I means this row, this plus this plus this tj. So we need this g in the correction factor. We want to calculate the correction factor. The formula for correction factor is g square by n. So 4017 square divided by n and we have already calculated this is 32. So our correction factor is 504 to 59.03. Now we need total sum of square. As you people know that the total sum of square is double summation. So this is i and this is j. So First, we need to take the square of x1, 121 square, 117. So, take the square of all this, take the square of x2. So, this is your x1. If I just write x1, this is your x2 and this is your x3. So, take the square of this. Similarly, take the square of this. When you add all these squares, so you will get this 170582. Similarly, for x2 square 159420. Similarly, for x3 square it will be 189405. So when you add all these, it will be double summation. So i 
j because this is summation x1 square this is summation x2 square and this is summation x3 square so x i j square when you add all these it will be 519407 519407 minus correction factor 504 to 59.03 when you deduct this it will be 15147.96 now the question arises in the one way ANOVA for unequal sample sizes because the formula before was summation t square uh, divided by r but now we have different sample in each sample we have different sizes different observation in the first one in the first sample we have 11 observation in the second we have 9 observation in the third we have 12 observation so similarly now you need to take t1 square so this is basically t1 square so summation t1 square you need to take the square of this this is t1 square okay this is t2 square this one is t2 square and this one is t3 square so 183316 divided by how many sample in this 11 11 okay in this one in the t2 square so the t2 square will you will obtain this t2 square t2 square from this 1186 whole square so it will 1406596 and how many sample in this 9 similarly in the third one this is t3 square 1729225 divided by how many observation 12 minus correction factor so this is correction factor and we have already calculated this so your treatment sum of square is this one when you calculated this treatment sum of square because this formula is totally different in the simple one way ANOVA where the number of sample sizes are equal so this thing is only different in the unequal sample size so you need to understand this difference error sum of square is just like the, the previous one total sum of square minus treatment sum of square so total sum of square is this one and treatment is this one when you subtract it it will be 14659 then now you need to construct an ANOVA table this is our ANOVA table this is source of variation this is the between sample variation this is within sample variation so as you people know degree of freedom so how many how many uh, samples we have how many group we have 3 so 3 minus 1 will be 2 and this is n minus k so n is 32 we have already calculated this is 32 ok 32 minus k how many sample group we have so 3 so the 32 minus 3 will be 29 when you add this 29 plus 2 will be 31 and this is equal to n minus 1 so we have already between sum of square which is also called treatment sum of square this is treatment so we have calculated treatment which is 4 at 8.58 and for error so for error which is also called within within sum of square so for error we have calculated 14659 this is 14659.38 we have already calculated this and then you need to calculate the average because the statistic formula is average variation between and average variation within so basically we need to calculate average now so how you will calculate average you you need to calculate 488.58 divided by 2 so 488.58 divided by 2 degree of freedom you will get this similarly for this 114659.38 divided by 29 you will get 505.49 then in the third step you need to calculate 244 so it will be 244.29 divided by 5 05.49 so it will be 0 0.48 so this is basically the f calculated f statistic value so this is your f statistic value okay now we need to construct a critical region so all the all the critical region all the f statistic will be right hand right tail statistic okay you need to remember this so now we know that f 0.05 level of significance 0.05 and the degree of degree of freedom for between variation is 2 degree of freedom between variation is 2 and degree of freedom for within variation is 29 so once again i am just going to the table in order to find out in 0.05 percent table for the for the numerator, numerator degree of freedom numerator degree of freedom is the 2 and denominator degree of freedom is 29 so once again i am going to the uh, f statistic table so this is our f statistic table and we looking for the alpha level of 0 0.05 so numerator degree of freedom is 2 numerator degree of freedom is 2 and denominator degree of freedom is 29 so you can see this is 3.33 and this is 2 
and this is 29 no, denominator degree of freedom so this is 3.33 so we will write this 3.33 in the figure so this is 3.33 this is 3.33 3.33 so now we need to compare we need to find out because this is threshold 3.33 so our calculated value is 0.48 which is lying in the accepted region so what should we need to do we should need to accept null hypothesis that all sample means the data which you took at different time period when at 8 o'clock 10 o'clock at 2 o'clock all the mean are equal and the alternative hypothesis is not correct that the all mean are not equal so i hope you understand that how you will conduct and one way know for unequal sample sizes so the only treatment some obscure formulation is a little bit different why this is different because we will not be able to use the general formulation because in every sample the observation are different so that is why we divide with those observation okay so now this is a simple assignment you need to solve this this is a very simple there are three groups and in each group the observation are same so n will be in the observation you not the treatment some obscure will be very simple c into r so c is 3 and how many observation in each 6 7 8 so the sample size will be 24 and you need to check that all observation all sample mean are equal or change so please try to solve this thank you